Hello, 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 hello. Okay. Let's go. Okay. Hey everybody, it's Crazy Bango Schneider. We hope you guys are having an amazing day. So today we are watching the 11th episode of Bad Batch Devil's Deal. So this is looking like a very interesting episode. It says, as the seas of rebellion ferment on in the outer rim. Sorry, my bleh. <laughs> the Empire schemes to squash it. So I'm guessing it might, well I'm not sure, because it might have something to do with Rex. Um, because obviously we do know that he went away um, after being contacted by an unknown person and is off in the outer room doing his own thing. So perhaps we might see Rex again? Not sure, but... I feel like it's going to pick up the pace in this episode. Just a tad. I, again, loved last episode. Um, and it was great. We covered a lot of different themes. And hopefully Hunt is going to be trusting Omega more in this next episode. But also in the coming episodes. Because, again, she has her strengths. She still has a lot to learn. But she has a lot of strengths and good qualities to her. So I hope that Hunter does trust her. She's a great character. And just, again, just like a sweet, innocent young girl who just wants to try and help her friends out. While being a part of the squad of the Bad Batch. And yeah, it's going to get... I think it's going to get juicy and spicy in these next few episodes. Because we are getting five episodes away from the end of season one. Which has been an incredible season so far. And it's going to get better with season two whenever that's going to come out. But yeah, for now, let's jump straight into this, because I'm very excited, and I just hope that it's going to be a good episode. Uh, <clears throat> but before that, please remember to like, subscribe, and comment if you enjoyed this video, but also keep up to date with all my other reactions to more TV shows, movies, and video games. So without further ado, let's jump straight into this. Is that Crosshair? It is. It is. Oh yeah, he's familiar. I think he was in Clone Wars. To protect us as they always have. Mm. The war has ended. Let us lay down our weapons and focus on Rhinos' future. Uh. <laughs> it's a little bit troubling though because Clarence uh -huh, brought a different end to the war. I'm trying to remember because. Oh, my bro my memory's really bad. If the daughter is in Rebels or something, wait. Oh yes, Hera. Yeah, she is. I'm pretty sure she is in um, Rebels. You guys can correct me on that. That's why I was getting confused. He knows that people are tired of fighting. We can't go on as we have been. By turning over our weapons, he's made us defenseless. I can't accept. Oh, they're handing over the weapons. That's a little bit like. The people should actually have a collection of weapons for themselves instead of it just being the clones. Finally is off limits, Hera. You know that. Uh, I never said we were at least three. I have my ways too. <laughs> what you saw, leave nothing out. The mother. Unacceptable. Do you realize Mothers know everything. <gasps> Crosshair lost all his hair. Oh, he looks good. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, his head's burned as well. This is what I mean. I said this last episode. Sorry, pausing. They were never, ever going to stop doing Crosshair's story, and they were never gonna get rid of him because Crosshair again is an asset. He still is under the influence of Order 66. I literally said this last episode, and I'm not gonna lie, a lot of people came for me in my Annans on Tumblr. I'm seeing you and I'm calling you out as it is. Um, dude, like, it- everyone was telling me, like, oh, cross it, like, there's not gonna be, like, a proper story for him, there's nothing- dude, he's right there, and just, like, they're obviously continuing the story, but it's that main thing that he's under Order 66, and he can't- it's not that he's not strong enough, it's just the influence is so, like, it's so, like, overwhelming that they can't, like, fight it. It's like, once it's there, it's- it's strong, and you can't get- and you can't get rid of it. So, Crosshair's story is still going to be a thing in Star Wars, and of course, the Bad Batch TV show. Um, whether it's explored more in this season or the next season, we just gotta be patient and see how it runs out, because, like, again, this is slow-paced storytelling. This isn't going to be, like, the Mandalorian. Mandalorian, every episode, something's happening. Like, it's, like, one after the other, every beat is the next, like, episode. It's gonna be like, oh, 
This is literally continuing from lo what happened last time. Continuation, continuation. This isn't like that. This is very different. But anyway, I'm just saying I was right. They're continuing his story. <laughs> Gobi trusts me to do my part. Why can't you? <laughs> that fiery spirit. <laughs> you remind me of myself at your age. My hope is that you won't ever have to live a life like mine. She does to an extent, but in a good way. She's working for good. Rebuild parts of the galaxy affected by the war. Affected by the war or helping the empire? I love that the uncle's teaching her. I know that the father obviously has a lot of responsibility, but it's nice to see that there's another father figure teaching her other stuff. That's nice. I like that touch. Is that the bad batch? It is. <laughs> I was wondering when they were going to turn up. <laughs> okay, you can come up. But no funny business. <laughs> funny business? Uh-huh. I'll be watching you. Uh. <laughs> okay, then. Aww. Hera seems so innocent in this. <laughs> Just like Omega was when she first started. It's so lovely to see Omega teaching. Oh, dude. It's so... Oh, look at that. Oh, please tell me this gets like an Academy Award or something. The artwork is so beautiful in the show. Oh, look at them. Oh, the artwork. Oh, oh I want that on my wall. I, yeah, I need to print some of these screenshots out and plaster them across the wall because it's very pretty. Oh, my lord. What the heck, man? Oh. Guys, these oh, this show deserves so many awards. Please, give it to them. Oh no! Damn, they're squashing them real quick. The public won't see it that way. You said it yourself. He has influence over them. And the fact remains, Chan has not committed a crime yet. But this Cinderella has. They're trying to pin- they're trying to pin it on her father? This clone- wait, I'm just saying. I, I can't remember the, the clone's name with the, the teal. That's a beautiful colour that's on the clone armour. But he seems like very protective of them. Which is, you know, usually it's like- It's not very emotive when these clones are under Order 66. So, did he not get affected maybe? I don't know, we'll see. Shit. Damn, they're even gonna stop them. That's good. I was afraid that he was gonna be too all high and mighty and be like, oh yeah, this is what she deserves for doing that, but thankfully not. I don't like that senator dude, the blue guy. The the big one. <laughs> I've seen him in the Clone Wars, I never liked him. Oh, nice shot. That clone seems so hesitant. Maybe it's the same thing that sort of happened with Rex. Maybe he was able to not get the effects. Oh, heck yeah, girl. Surrender? What are you doing? Keeping us alive, Senator. What? Is Crosshair somewhere? Yeah, because Crosshair's not with them. Yeah, don't do it. Oh, no, Crosshair's going to kill him, isn't he? Thank you for playing your part, Senator. <gasps> no! They're gonna frame him! That's how they're gonna do it! Oh my god, no! Arrest these insurgents for the attempted assassination of Ron Freetar. No! Oh my god! Shit! Oh my god! Shit. Oh, Hera! Is that the end?! That went so quick! Oh my god! Is there gonna be like a- is there a cutscene? At the end? No. Oh, shit! That was such a good episode! I loved it! I know people are gonna be like, but- um... 
what's it called? Um, the Bad Batch weren't in it too long. Why? This was so good. I loved that we had, like, because it, it was getting to that point where, you know, we were going on smaller missions and stuff like that. And it was, like, it was great, but it was, like, there was nothing, like, new to it. But this was such a, like, a refresher. Like, I was just watching every moment, like, sucked into it. And that went so quick. Such a good episode. I'm back into it. <laughs> this was this was great, honestly. I absolutely love this episode. From start to finish, it was great. It was very political, but it also had a mixture of great action sequences and just great characters that we haven't seen in a very long time. Okay, so I did have to run back quickly and look at the names just because there was a few names that I just couldn't remember of, like, specific characters. So Sindula, Senator Tart, Cham, and Hera. And then I think their last names are Adula or Abdullah. Um, so you guys can correct me on that. But, um, guys, like, again, like, this episode was so good. Sorry, I'm just pulling up my sock because I'm cold. Um, but this episode was great. I absolutely loved it. Again, it was brand new. It was fresh. We were in this new environment with these characters that, you know, for a long time we haven't seen them. Especially since I think, it, I'm pretty sure it was the Clone Wars. And obviously we see Hera more in the Rebels series. Um, but... This was real, a real nice refresher in this series after seeing, you know, like the Bad Batch every single episode and with different characters, of course, but to see like fresh faces with the focus just on them was great. And I thought it was a very good idea and just, just like a simple, like clever idea to make the deal between Bad Batch and I think it's Go Gon... Gondi? Yeah, Gobi. Sorry. Gobi. <laughs> I said Gondi or something. Gobi. Um, it was interesting to see all these different perspectives in this particular episode. And it was nice to have an episode with different themes. Like, it's sort of similar to Clone Wars. So we're seeing um, the transition between, like, you know, like, obviously fighting in the war to, you know, the transition of peace. But then it's like... It's so, yeah, strange, and, uh, especially because this whole planet is giving up all their weapons. I was like, you wouldn't do that, necessarily. But the fact that, you know, they've worked so much with the clones that they've grown this trust between the clones and the people that it's like, oh yeah, it's totally okay, the clones will protect us, but there are obviously people like Gobi and, uh, like, rebels, but resistance people are like, no, this seems very strange. We should have our own resistance or fighters or some sort of protection that isn't just from the clones. And that is a smart idea. I would also agree with that. Um, but just, oh, it was so good. And again, I want to talk about, like, the the, the clone that was really, really, like, lo like sweet towards the family. Um, Hauser. Okay, that's his name. Because I was like, his name is somewhere in the episode. So, Hauser. Because I thought it was Hunter, and I was like, wait, Hunter? No. Okay. So, Hauser. He seems very different compared to the other clones. So, he, it seems like he has that still sweet, kind, like, persona that we saw so much in the Clone Wars. Very much like Rex, but he has a, a lot more grit to him. And protectiveness towards this family. So I'm guessing it's because of the close ties he had with Cham and Sindula and Hera that this might might have stopped Order 66 from affecting him because he seems like really chill. And also I love his armor colors. Again, that teal color, oh, very pretty. And we've never really seen it before. So that's a really nice color. But anyway, he, I feel like he's going to maybe group up with the Bad Batch next episode and help them, like, if they do get into contact with them and Sid gives them maybe a job or if they just get contacted, maybe, um, they're gonna work together and then they're gonna realise, oh wait, you didn't get affected by the chip, which is really strange. Um, or, which is really sad, they might pick him up and put him into Crosshair's sort of batch of followers. Oh, that's terrifying. But he seems like a really good soldier, but also just a really good man in terms of, like, trying to protect Hera and even, like, being so shocked that they would frame Chairman Sindula. So I'm excited to see where that goes next episode. I also wanted to say, it was so nice to see Hera again. And I apologize, just because my memory's a bit iffy on different points of Rebels, just because it was ages ago when I watched it. And I only <laughs> specifically remember moments like Ahsoka moments and the Ahsoka versus Darth Vader. Spoilers for anyone who has watched Rebels, but that happens. Um, and that was like 
the big part for me. And then I didn't I didn't watch the whole series. I've only really watched like I think the first three seasons, I think. Or I think it's just the first two seasons. I can't remember. But it wasn't much. And then it was like on watching it on TV and then I like started doing uni and stuff, so I couldn't really watch it like otherwise than that. But now I can because it's on Disney Plus, so I might catch up on it another time. Anyway, yeah, it was nice to see this part of the story. And I hope nothing happens to Chairman Sindula because they're such like a great couple. I love seeing such like a healthy relationship like that. How supportive they are of each other. And even just their relationship with um Hera. Like she, Hera has such like a great powerful mother figure in her life which is obviously Sindula and Sindula was like I know what you've been doing and she was like like it's <laughs> it's like a mother's instinct when they know their child's up to something. Um uh, and it's such a beautiful thing and it just felt like I was smiling so much in this episode and we don't get those moments especially in a story like Star Wars and especially in Bad Batch post um everything that happened in the Clone Wars. So it's nice to sort of have that moment, like, where it's, like, this family bond. Like, obviously we see that with the Bad Batch, but with an actual family, it's so nice. And even, like, even though there's still, like, you know, some... Not, like, fighting between Hera and Cham, but more, like, you know, father-daughter, like, the father being really protective and being, like, you know, please don't do this, and, you know, just being really protective and loving and just... I love that, just seeing that between them and trying to teach them and saying, like, you know, you got to be patient, you're not ready yet. Um, just all those lessons are just so important. And we do see that with Omega and the rest of Bad Batch, but to see it in this way was just a beautiful way to do it, and I loved it. Again, I really loved that. We didn't see Bad Batch for too long, but, oh, dude, again, the artwork in this show was beautiful. That whole scene on, I'm guessing it was the moon, was beautiful, so nice, and just seeing them and just how they act, like, in the transaction, like, they never remove their helmets, it's always, like, you know, transaction, and then we leave, we get out of here. But, like, to see that interaction between Omega and Hera was really nice, because you see these two different lives, like, Omega having, like, four father figures, and then Hera having technically two, which is Gobi and her father, Cham, which was really, really nice, and you see, like, the difference between these two young women who are growing up in this post-Clone Wars time, and just how they're being raised, how they're being taught, and, like, just the comparison, and it was really nice, and I loved that, just that small moment. I'm guessing we might see Hera and Omega and, obviously, the Bad Batch reunited in the next episode, but it was really nice to see that in this episode and see how Omega was like, oh yeah, this is like my horror. And like Hera being like, oh my god, this is so amazing. Like just full on like excited about it and just so sweet. And yeah, just something about that childlike innocence is so nice. And just seeing how they see and perceive the world during that time. But then when they grow up, they're like, Argh. you know, like the world isn't the greatest place it is in some aspects, but not all of it. But just to see them in that moment, just two young girls just like talking about their like love of flying and just all the stuff that they're learning. It's just, that's great. I love all that stuff. So this episode, I thoroughly enjoyed. And again, like I did, that episode went way too quick for me. So I hope that we get a really good episode next week because that was, I want more. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please give a like, subscribe, comment, and tell me your thoughts on this episode of Bad Batch, episode 11, The Devil's Deal. <laughs> I forgot for a second what it was. Um, again, such a great episode. Tell me what you guys thought, because I would love to hear people's um, thoughts on this, because this is a new take, and obviously, you know, the Bad Batch were there for literally, like, two minutes, so I want to hear what people were thinking. Did you guys enjoy it? Did you guys find it strange that the Bad Batch weren't in it for too long? Thumbs or pros to it? I would love to hear all your feedback about this episode, because, again, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and, oh, again, the animation! Like, this deserves, like, Academy Awards. Like, I know the Academy Awards go to, like, big pictures and all that stuff, but animation, there's so much detail to it, and especially during COVID time, and just all, all this stuff, like, all this artwork and, like, cartoon shows we're getting, like, even Castlevania was done in COVID time, and this one as well, they were working on it, obviously. Just, they, oh, like, please. <laughs> we need, like, more awards for these animated shows than just like teen awards and stuff. It's more like adults watch this stuff. It's not just kids. So that's why I'm like, oh, 
Please, like, give them the awards that they deserve, because it's so good. Anyway, I'll stop talking about that. That's just me raving on about how amazing animation is and how people need more, like, love for it, because it's so good. And just, people are so talented, I can't even begin to talk about it. So again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Crazy Vangel, out. Woo!